Good evening. We're back with another episode of the Lord of the Rings LCG Progression Series. And tonight is a card review of the Mumakil Adventure Pack. First Adventure Pack of the Haradrim Cycle. So let's take a look. For the hero we've got Khalil, 10 threat, 222 4 health, so his stats are not good. You may re use resources from Khalil's pool to pay for Harad ally cards of any sphere. Discard a Harad ally from your hand to ready a Harad character in play. Limit once per phase. Well, based on the cards that have currently been released, the Harad allies in this adventure pack are all very high cost and they're all unique. So I guess the use for his action is to make use of the unique cards which you've already played and therefore don't have a use for. At least not immediately. You can at least get a use out of them by discarding them to ready a character. Now, what are those two abilities on this card worth? Do they make up for his poor stats? Use, you may use resources from Khalil's pool to pay for Harad ally cards of any sphere. Well, let's look at the Harad cards in this adventure pack. Would we play all three of these in a deck, in a Harad deck? Three of Yazan, three of Furial, three of Jubiar. Jubair. And if we did play all three of them, that's a cumbersome deck. So, three five cost characters, I mean, that would be an exceptional deck if you get them all out at once. But getting them all out would take a lot of turns. You need resource acceleration, you need it all to be on Khalil so that you could use his resources to pay for Harad ally cards. He is noble, that helps a little. He's not Gondor. Interesting. I don't think it would be a bad deck. The Harad deck. His abilities are difficult to evaluate. What is being able to use resources from his pool actually worth? in terms of stats. Well, I guess there are cards that do that, right? Like there's Navi's Belt, which is worth two resources and a card in order to do that, and it does only a limited version of it. This is a limited version of it, but I guess it's functionally equivalent to that card, to Navi's Belt. Two resources and a card. That's not bad. And then you can also get some action advantage I like this hero. I like the Harad in concept, however, they are likely to be cumbersome. The Outlands hero, Herlu in the Fair, has a similar ability in being able to use resources from his pool to pay for Outlands cards of any sphere. However, that deck can be very fast because all the Outlands cards are low costed, and all the Harad cards are very high costed, and high costed means slow, and slow is typically bad in solo play. So I guess my opinion on Harad and Khalil, because outside of the Harad synergy, Khalil's not good. His stats are bad, and his synergistic abilities only work with Harad cards. So my opinion as of right now on the Harad deck and Khalil is that they're too slow for solo play. However, there are probably ways to make it work but I think at its core, it's very slow. So let's see how they develop the synergy. Perhaps more low cost cards come out later, which make it make sense. But as of right now, it's very gonna be very slow and cumbersome and therefore difficult to play in solo play. Andrath Guardsman, two cost, one, zero, one, two health. After you play Andrath Guardsman from your hand, choose a non-unique enemy engaged with you. That enemy cannot attack you this round. That's a good ability, if you've already got an enemy engaged with you, which is what Dunedain is trying to do. I'd definitely run this card in a Dunedain deck. I don't think I'd run it in other types of decks, because typically you're not, you're trying to deal with cards that you engage the same turn that you engage them, the same round that you engage them. 
So you wouldn't get a lot of use out of his ability in that case, and he's understated for his cost if you just look at his stats. But in a Duna Dine deck, he's great because that deck is designed to keep enemies engaged with you. So he's another addition to the fun, quirky deck that is the Duna Dine. Though this does not elevate them to top tier status, it keeps them in the pretty good status and possibly great against certain quests. Prepare for battle. One cost. Limit one copy in the victory display. This is the trend with the new side quests now. You can run three copies of them in a deck. Just the duplicates are not useful. Takes six progress to complete. While this quest is in the victory display, the first player draws an additional card during the resource phase. Well, that's a great effect. This will definitely have a use in some decks, in like a side quest deck. Possibly even a main deck. I really liked uh, The Storm Comes. In theory and in practice, and I like this as well. I wish it didn't cost one resource, but... And it's leadership, that's interesting. The Storm Comes was neutral and cost zero. A card draw ability out of the lore sphere or the re, uh, the leadership sphere is not very common. Typically, that's a lore ability. I like this card, and I definitely think it has a place in some very good decks. It's a good card. Yep, I like it. Could be very powerful if you draw it early, complete it. draw one card every round for the rest of the game. You only have to do that like two or three rounds and that's already a very good card, I think. Maybe three rounds would make it a good card. Yazan, five cost, two, three, one, three health. Or odd ranger. After Yazan is declared as an attacker, deal one damage to a non-unique enemy in play. I like this card a lot at three cost. I like this card a little at four. A little. You're not going to be using him as an attacker every round. Or every... Yeah, it's once per phase. It's any non-unique enemy in play. So I like this card a little at four. It's okay at four. At five it's too much. But with any kind of cost reduction it becomes good. Like for example Elrond Vilia or, uh, I don't know, Very Good Tale or something like that. Any kind of cost reduction, this can be a very good card. But it's I don't really like it at 5 cost to just flat out play it, because that's too much for what the card does. Wait no longer, two cost. At the beginning of the quest phase, search the top five cards of the encounter deck for an enemy and put it into play engaged with you, then reveal one less encounter card this phase to a minimum of zero. Shuffle the encounter deck. Interesting. That's a very interesting card. Well, it's definitely a good Dunadine card if you're running tactics. This could help you with questing. First of all, it controls what comes out of the deck, and second of all, you don't have to deal with its threat. So there's definitely situations where this is very good. I don't think it's always very good. And it costs two, which is expensive. So it's a situational card, and therefore a niche card, but in its niche, it could be very good. It could be even game-winning, potentially, although that's not going to happen very often. I don't think, so I, I don't like non-permanent effects unless they really do a lot or they get something permanent into play. This does enable combos though with the Dunedain deck, so I think it's good in that deck if you're running tactics. But I wouldn't run it in every deck and I wouldn't run it for every situation, but it may help overcome specific challenges. Very interesting card. Difficult to make work exactly how you want, but when it does, it could be phenomenal. Jubire. 
5 cost 1, 2, 3, 3 health. After Jubai or Exhaust to defend an attack, discard one face down shadow card from a non unique enemy. Well, that ability is worth one cost and a card. Well, it's not. It's worth one cost and a card to discard a card right out a shadow card right after its effect has been triggered. The effect on Jubire is probably worth like half of a resource and a card or, or just one resource or something like that. So I like this card a lot at four cost. At five cost you, need, you would need to take advantage of his ability probably two or even three times in a game to make him good. Given that he costs five, it takes a while to get him out and then in order to use his ability two or three times we're talking about a pretty long game so what he really needs to make him good is cost reduction now there is Kaldara Kaldara can be used with Prince Imrahil and he can get Jubiar, Jubiar out that way and he'd be very good in that deck uh, he'd be very good in an Elrond Vilya deck there's probably other situations with cost reduction or with resource acceleration. Because if you can get him out quickly where you're defending two or three attacks during a game, he's very good. Very good ally. But if you draw him like late game and you play him for five and you defend maybe one attack, you're sad about it. But if you get him out with cost reduction and can do it early, he's very strong. The same is true of Yazan too, I guess. If you get him out early and use his ability, but you'd have to, when it comes to his ability, you have to, you would have to use it every round. And even if you used it every round, I don't like it at five cost. But Jubire, I do like at five cost if you're able to use his ability two or three times in a game, which isn't going to happen, I don't think, if you're just saving up for him and playing him after five rounds or four rounds. Dwarf Pipe. One cost attached to a dwarf character, limit one per character. After a card is discarded from the top of your deck, exhaust Dwarf Pipe to place that card on the bottom of your deck. After a card is discarded from the top of your deck. How often is a card discarded from the top of your deck? I don't recall that happening very much. This is probably useful in some combo decks, but definitely a niche card. This isn't going to be like a card that you run to counter anything that I can think of, but it may be useful in some combos that are designed around it. Furial. 5 cost 3, 1, 2. After Furial commits to the quest, look at the top card of the encounter deck. Then you may discard the looked at card. That's a great ability. Uh, the stats are, boy, so once again, I think you need to be able to play, this is very similar to Jubiar, where you need to be able to play it in order to take advantage of the ability for two or three rounds in order to make this good for its cost, or be running ways to get it out, so you have to be able to get it out fairly quickly, because if you just wait four turns and then play it, after saving up all your resources all that time. I think it's difficult to get maximum value out of this, but if you can get it out early and quickly, it's very strong. Jubire and Ferial seem similar in that regard. Very strong if you can get them out with enough time remaining in the game to use their abilities two or three times. With Ferial's abilities seeming more likely to be you'd be able to do that more consistently than Jubiar because Jubiar requires you to be defending attacks and Furial can just quest every round and take advantage of the ability. So she seems like the strongest ally in this adventure pack to me. Closely followed by Jubiar who I also like a lot and I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, my apologies for that. But I like both those allies quite a lot. I think they'll be in some very very strong decks 
Pony in a Trap, one cost, play only if you control a unique character with the Ranger trait and another unique character with the Warrior trait. After you engage an enemy, that enemy cannot attack you until the end of the round. Uh, okay, so it's another feint. A, a situational, a feint that requires you to set up something that comes out of the lore sphere. Well, in this situation where you're running a ranger hero and a warrior hero, I like this card a lot if you're running lore. Seems good. Seems very good in that situation. And I'd run it in a lot of different decks. Any time where I would run faint, but I don't have access to tactics, I would run Coney in a trap. Seems good. Would I run both Faint and Coney in a trap? Potentially. That could potentially help overcome a specific challenge, yeah. It's a good card, as far as non-permanent effects go. Khalil's Headdress. Three cost, each Herod character gets plus one willpower. Refresh action, exhaust Khalil's Headdress to shuffle the topmost Herod ally in your discard pile into your deck. So you can cycle through them and get more out to discard them from hand or any more Herod characters, but that process is going to be very slow. So each Herod character gets plus one willpower. That on its own. This card is too expensive. Three willpower for three cost would be good, but that would take a long time to set up. And cycling Herod allies from your discard pile through your deck this way is going to be cumbersome unless you're drawing a lot of cards from your deck. I think this card is too expensive. And the whole Herod synergy seems designed to be slow. Very slow. So you have to design decks to make it work. And if you do, it's very powerful. But that's going to be very hard to do in solo play, especially against very difficult quests. Running the whole Harad synergy. Now there is going to be quests in solo play, very difficult quests, where Furial or Jubiar are going to be extremely good if you set up your deck to make them work. So they have their place in some very, very difficult quests against some very, very difficult quests. Khalil, not as much, because his abilities specifically aren't very good in the early game because there aren't any low-cost Harad allies and you don't really want to be discarding your Harad allies until after you've already played one and they're all expensive to play so or until you've drawn multiple copies of one so I know I don't know as much about Khalil but Jubiar and Furial I like a lot it's possible Khalil's better than I think he is but Jubiar and Furial I like a lot and I think the adventure pack's worth buying for them. They'll be in some very good decks. So, and prepare for battle is quite good as well. Yazan is worth a look for sure. Wait no longer and Endroth Guardsmen are interesting cards. I like this adventure pack quite a bit. The cards in it anyway. So thank you for watching.